good evening class so in today's botany lecture we are going to see a new topic gymnosperms and their economic importance so as we know that gymnosperm they are a part of the phanerogam plant as we know botany uh, classification and there are two broad categories one deal with the cryptogams lower plant and second one deal with the higher plants or you can say the phanerogams so inside the phanerogams we are having two kind of plants that are the gymnosperm and angiosperm so today we are going to see how the gymnosperm plant have a various characteristics and how they are economically important let's begin with the introduction part. so if we see a definition for the gymnosperm so the term gymnosperm means naked gymnos that is particularly for the naked and the sperma that is for the seed so that this is the basic character of the gymnosperm plant that they are having the seed which is uncovered or you can say they are possessing uncovered seed even in this diagram you can see that they are having the seed just on the surface this is the cone structure inside the gymnosperm and they are having this uh, structure which do not have any covering on their seeds they were first introduced by the theophorist in like 300 before Christ. So you can say they are the kind of any ancient, uh, you know, originated plant being founded very in an old time. Theophorist, as, as we call them, uh, as we call him, the father of ancient botany. So that's why the theophorist was the one who gave the classification for the very first time. And in his very first classification, we got the gymnospermic plant. So that's why they are having some, you know, real importance inside it. According to uh, global gymnosperm, are phanerogams without ovary. So according to Jubal, he was also a botanist, and he said the gymnosperm are, are the phanerogams, but they are not consisting ovaries inside them so that is a basic feature of the gymnosperm or you can say that if we are talking about the identifying feature so these are the identifying feature for the gymnosperm you can see here in this diagram there are various kind of uh, gymnospermic aperture has been shown here they mostly like the you know you see the christmas plant okay so christmas plant is a common type of the gymnospermic plant which uh, by seeing the structure of uh, Christmas plant because this is very well known kind of plant and you most of the you didn't know that the Christmas plant are a type of gymnosperm plant. So the phanerogams or spermatophyta. So basically the phanerogams or we can call them the spermatophyta on the basis of the presence of seed. And this is the basic difference between a cryptogams and phanerogams that cryptogams do not possess seed inside them. But phanerogams, they have seed inside them. So that's why, we, because they consist seed, maybe it is not covered one, but they have the seed. So that's why we put them under the phanerogams plant or seed plants. So basically, they are those plants which reproduce by means of seed, not spores. So till the pteridophytes, you can say, from uh, thallophyta, bryophyta and uh, pteridophyta. These were the plant who were reproducing by the means of the spores. But from the spermatophyte or from the gymnosperm to angiosperm, plant has to be reproduced by the seeds or you can say the seed are the reprodu reproducing unit inside the gymnosperm and angiosperm. So gymnosperm are the vascular plant where seeds are not enclosed within an ovary so this is a condition here that seed do not has to be enclosed inside the ovary opposite to an angiosperm or flowering ovule or you can say the plant which have a proper reproductive system they are the angiosperm and gymnospermic characteristics are just opposite to the angiosperm because they have everything to cover their seeds they have special features like uh, flowers and also their flowers will be going to convert into the fruit and these kind of structure having flowers fruit they are totally absent inside the gymnosperm 
In these plant, the ovules are born naked on the surface of the megasporophylls, which are often arranged in the cones. So, if we are talking about the uh, you know uh, reproductive organ inside the gymnosperm, so they are basically present over the surface of megasporophylls. So because they this is a basic, basic feature of them that they should not be covered. So that's why they are present on the surface, which are often arranged in the cones and their structure. When we look them, they look like a cone structure. Fossil record, if we see fossil, the plant which are not present in today's world, but they were present at a time of a millions year ago. So fossil record indicates the gymnosperm must have evolved approximately like 300 million years ago from non-seed producing ancestor of the extinct division of Progeomenospermatophyta, uh, which were fern-like in appearance. So basically, if we are talking about their fossil record, if we see how old they can be, so their fossil record uh, showed that they can be arisen or you know they can be originated or they can be old like approximately 300 million years ago. So that's a uh, you know way more old plants, and uh, also uh, they are possessed. You like we have some origination theory. Every about every plant, every species. We have an evolving theory for that. So, for their evolution theory, or you can say, for how they got originated, so they has been originated by the non-speed producing ancestor. So, any ancestor of the like uh, some extinct division, we are just the, these extinct division. They are like the you know imaginary divisions. We don't have been seen them. But some of the fossil record we got, and on the basis of those fossil record, we made some kind of division. And why we made these kind of division just to establish the phylogeny, or you can say just to establish the you know similarity and differences between the evolutionary or fossil plant to their current phylogenies. So this uh, pro uh, Progeomonas spermatophyta which were fern like in appearance, uh, we think that our, you can say, scientists studied that, then they are the double version of this division. Gymnosperm were dominant plant over the Earth's surface during the Jurassic and Cretaceous period of uh, Mesozoic era. So as we studied about the geological time scale, and on the basis of geological time scale, if we see that at what condition Gymnosperm were dominant, so they were the dominant inside the Jurassic and Cretaceous period, which was come under the Mesozoic era. At present, about 83 genus and approximately 790 species of living gymnosperm are distributed throughout the temperate, tropical, arctic region of the world. So we can see that they are having total 83 genus and 790 species which are living uh, gymnosperm, but uh, most of the gymnosperm, like if we are going to see their, uh, you know, classification. So in their classification, the very first kind of order which we are going to study, they were the psychedales. So psychedales are the, uh, you know, uh, order which are having more extinct genus, or you can say the more fossil genus as comparison to the living one. So that's why we are talking about uh, the fossil record, the most of the fossil record which we got, they are from the gymnosperm. So that's why we call them, they were dominant at a time and now whatever the gymnosperm we are seeing, they are the one which have been remained. Otherwise, they really may be a lot of the species that has been extinct of the gymnosperm. Maybe they don't go up like the survivor of the fittest Darwin state that the only thing which have ability to survive, to adapt these things and only can be remained. Otherwise, other things most of the, they got for the extinction. In present time now, if we see the how their distribution work, means in what areas uh, uh, our uh, gymnosperms are present. So basically like the temperate, tropical, arctic, all the regions uh, in which the gymnosomic plants are present. Now, uh, this is all about their overview. 
Now we are going to see their external features, how they look from outside. If we see them, how they are going to look from the outside. So gymnosperm are predominantly woody plants. So they are not green like the bryophytes or thylophytes or teredophytes. Mostly their uh, you know, appearance, their stem are woody in nature. We presented by trees, mostly the trees, but shrubs and rarely climbers. So they can be the trees, large, big, developed trees. Sometimes they can be shrubs or very rarely they can be climbers. So shrubs, you know, that the small woody things which uh, basically modified their leaves into some thrones-like structure. So they are usually zero five. So uh, mostly their uh, you know nature, they can just uh, grow in a water deficit condition. So any kind of plant which can live under the water deficit condition, we can call them the zero five. So they are the zero phytic plants. Some of them are deciduous, while other are evergreen. So some of the plant which can fall off their leaves in certain you know season deciduous plant are those which uh, fall off their leaves in a particular season like at the time of march or uh, you know autumn basically in autumn the plants just uh, fall off their leaves so that's why in uh, deciduous they can do that but in most of the gymnospermic plant they are evergreen only some rare plants are which are deciduous in nature sequoia sempre winds so california or coast redwood is probably the tallest living tree reaching a height nearly 112 meter and attain a growth of 15 meter so attaining a 15 uh, meter smallest gymnosperm is jamia pygmy so you can see uh, the diversity of length you can also see that uh, like jamia pygmy that is just having a growth of 15 meter and uh, this uh, you know uh, Cast, cost redwood, they are having uh, the tallest uh, living tree with the height of 112 meter. You can see how much difference in between them. Sorry, that smallest uh, gymnosperm is Jamia pygmy, and it can be like 25 centimeter tall. Sometimes, like if we see their range, they can be like some uh, time it is 25 centimeter only tall, so it's very short. Dexodium maxima has a trunk with an enormous diameter of 17 meter. How, you know, um, how broad the width of the plant should be. But uh, the, their width is like uh, so much elaborated. Like 17 meter, it is really much uh, a diameter. The Bristolon pine, the three species of pine actually, Arista, Longvia, and Balfurnia, they are brought to reach an age greater than any other single organism known up to 5,000 years. So you can see how, you know, diverse uh, the gymnosperm are, how interesting they are. They can be reached up to like 112 meter and they can be as short as like 25 centimeter also. Their diameter can be like 17 meter and uh, you can see the age that is also very, you know, fascinating anything cannot be lived like the 5000 years and they can live up to like 5000 years plant body is porophytic and can be differentiated into root stem and leaf so they have a well differentiated plant body and differentiated inside the having a true roots true stem and true leaves generally the plant possesses well developed taproot system in some gymnosperm and the root shows symbiotic relationship. So this is also a very important character of the gymnosperm. Then they have this well taproot system because of their zero phytic conditions. Because they have to show the zero phytic condition. And for zero phytic condition, they need as much as water they can opt. So obtaining this uh, water, they needed a very classified taproot system. So in some gymnosperm, the root shoot symbiotic relationship also symbiotic relationship means like the corolloid root of cycles they have this algal zone inside them and the pinus mycorrhizal root of pinus they are having the fungi relationship inside them the stem is erect so their stem that is erect woody and branched sometimes it can be unbranched in the case of Cycus and tuberous in Jamia. Jamia is a little very small, like 25 centimeter, 
So that's why their stem is like tuberous in form and it can be unbranched in the case of cycles. Presence of leaf scars on the stem is the characteristic feature of gymnosperm and presence of the leaf scars. I think I can show you one. This uh, inside the You can see here in this diagram, these are the scars, okay? They are present on the, basically this is a reproductive organ of the sacus or pinus. So they look like this, but uh, in the dairy, these leaves on which surface from these leaves originated, they basically remain, or you can say they basically leave a scar on the stem. So, uh, leaving this scar on the stem makes several leaf traces or leaf scars on their stem body. So, and this uh, remaining or leaving of the leaf scar by the leaves, this is a characteristic feature of gymnosperm. So, the arrangement of the leaf on the stem may be spiral or cyclic. So, they can be present. This is, you can say, they present in a cyclic manner. A very clear cyclic. So they can be present in a, a spiral cyclic. They may be one kind, like the monomorphics, all leaf are the same kind. And they can be two kinds, like the dimorphic. Dimorphic means they are having the foliage leaves and the scale leaves. Foliage leaves are basically green leaves, simple, and they are broad one, and they are present there just for doing the photosynthesis because they are the green one. But second leaf, they are the uh, second type of leaf which we are called the scale leaves they are basically for the protection so as uh, this is the structure there are these brown leaves you can see at the bottom of this they are the brown leaves here. they are very small they are not as much as this green giant leaves they are very small and present near the this reproductive cones and they are present here just to do the protection of the normal whole sporangium and they are present over these also when they are at the young stage their leaves actually scaly leaves they cover these sporangia inside them so the main function is photosynthesis for foliage scale leaves are present around the reproductive structures and apex and they are mainly productive in nature so scale leaves are just do fine function for the protection and foliage leaf just do for the photosynthesis at a large manner. Recently in 2011, new classification and linear sequence of extent still existing. Gymnosperm based on previous molecular and morphological, phylogenetic and other studies are presented by Martin J.M. and Kristen Hinsom and their co-workers. So this is the classes which has been given by them. So the subclass one that is come under the gymnosperm, that is one order cycadales, family cycadaceae. They are having just one genus, okay, and 107 species like the cycles. Family two inside them, that is gemmaceae, and they are going to consist nine genus, 2006 species. Example is gymia and mycocycles. So they are like a small tiny plant family. Subclass three here, Jinkodae and order just one order jingogus family three and one genus and one extent species jingogo fourth one is genitae genitae is uh, in which uh, we are having like uh, i think three three genus or maybe two genus here two genus yes in this case we are going to have two genus one is the velvet sales and second one is needles so in this Velvet seal, there will be one genus, one species, that is Velvetia needles. There are one genus, but 30 species, like the order genome one or the Ephedrales, family six, and Ephedraceae, one genus, 40 species. So basically, the important kind of the plants which you can be going to find from this uh, one or more class have been given by this latest classification, that is subclass four, Pinnidae. Pinidae, they are order Pinnales, and family 7, Pinnaceae, 11 genus, 225 species, Cretaceous, Binus, and Pisha. Pinidae also can be, you know, uh, 
in a old classification they can't be called as in the coniferates pinnidae the spinous and pisia the cedral they are the one which uh, come from out of coniferae so they are the order which come under this subclass pinnidae and uh, as we are if we are studying the modern ones so we have to remember these classes but in order to study of these uh, all characteristic if we want, wanted to combine these study them so as we are seeing the common character of gymnosperm that is fine but uh, like if you wanted to study in the genus level so there can be the cycas pinus nettles ginkgo girls and aphidera if you studied these uh, plants from the gymnosperm majorly all the features which come under the gymnosperm they were going to cover by so you can just uh, study those character now this was all about uh, the external features now we are going to see some interesting internal structure of gymnosperm so the roots are diarc and polyarc so roots can be diarc or polyarc means vesicular bundle they can be in presence of the two or they can be multiple in them in a stem well developed vascular system is present in the form of vascular bundles and the vascular bundle are open and dark and arranged in a ring so if we see the you know stem internal structure and inside the stem internal structure if we are seeing the position and type of vascular bundle so they are the well developed kind of vascular system they are possessing in and these vascular bundle they are open in dark means towards the center open means bundle sheet is not present and they should be arranged in a ring formation second growth take place in the gymnosperm and there is the formation of annual rings basically they are the woody plants and if a plant is woody then 100% there will be a secondary growth because by the secondary growth we can have the wood formation inside the plant so this secondary growth presence is is the main reason behind the wood formation so as we already studied like in the first line that uh, gymnosperm they are the woody plants so hence they should have the secondary growth inside them the xylem is composed of tracheids and border pitted and xylem parenchyma so if we see the transduction tissue xylem or you can say the vascular tissue xylem so what are they made up of and what kind of cells are present inside them so they can be tracheids and xylem-parent chyma secondary wood is of two type so, so the wood formation which is going to be inside the gymnosperm that can be two type menoxylic means the porous and loose due to presence of large amount of parent chyma broad medullary rays they can be present in the cycus useless basically commercially if we see we cannot use them because they are so porous they don't have uh, rigidity inside them or you can say they cannot be go up they do not have that much strength or tensile net so that's why we cannot use them second is the pinoxylic they are compact hard due to less amount of parenchyma and narrow medullary rays and they can be used as a commercial uses border pitted may be any serrate or multi serrate so any serrate means single layered or multi serrate if we are talking about them so they have to be multiple in lengths so they are border pitted okay so pitted uh, means they the pitting uh, presence that is kind of thickening inside the cells so as we know that the parenchyma and medullary rays they are very narrow so if we are uh, calling a cell a narrower so basically they have special kind of deposition on these cell because in this scenario only cell has to be narrower like pteridophytes in the wood xylem vessel and fibers are absent only in nettles they are going to have vessels otherwise in whole gymnosperm plant vessels will be absent only a needle is a very advanced kind of uh, gymnospermic order which possess vessel inside them phloem is composed of sieve tubes and phloem parenchyma companions that are completely absent same as the vessels the higher character of a particular complex tissue is absent same inside the phloem they also do not possess companion cell inside them 
these are characterized by presence of thick cuticle and second stoma as we know that plant has to face uh, the xerophytic condition or plant deficit condition so basically uh, these condition water deficit condition they can be you know uh, they can be preferable or this will be good to having a thick cuticle and second stoma because of this thick cuticle and second stoma plants can able to reduce their rate of transpiration the water which has to be evaporated in the presence of light that should be limited by having thick cuticle and second stoma i think you all know about second stoma the stomatas which have very minute and tiny pore and because of having this minute and tiny pore they will not going to evaporate much water from the plant mesophyll tissue they may be differentiated into the palisade tissue and spongy parenchyma so this mesophyll tissue are only present inside the leaves so they are the major tissue which are you know determined to do the photosynthesis inside the body and uh, photosynthesis has to be done inside the leaf because foliage leaves are present here and they are the green ones so this palisade and spongy they will be going to do the photosynthesis inside the leaf last point if we see here lateral veins are absent in most of the gymnosperm so the venation uh, property inside the uh, leaves you already seen the leaf have a lot of venation inside them so basically lateral venation or you can say veins they are absent in most of the gymnosperm so the translocation of nutrient take place with the help of transfusion tissue so the transfusion or you can say the translocation from the food from one place to another place veins just do the function for the transportation inside the leaf so that transportation work work has to be done here by having the transfusion tissue inside them so now the ornamental value we see uh, this was all about their external and their internal structure now the next thing we are going to see here some economic importance of the you can say some economic importance of the gymnosperm so the very first economic importance about the gymnosperm they are the ornamental value ornamental value means they look very beautiful so because of their uh, beauty they can be placed inside the hotels or some buildings or you can say the mall or in, even in at the homes we place them for their beautiful look food value we talk about so cycas diboluta and cycas rumpi they are the two cycas species which uh, having this sagu starch obtained in their pith and their cortex and that is a main source of the food in like uh, some chinese and japanese countries so or you can say northern countries basically they use this as a, as a source of major source of starch seed starch obtained from seed of cycas rumpi dion it prepared into the flour and cooked before eating so that can be done in like we uh, make the flour from the wheat so they can make the flour from the seed starch of cycas and they cooked before eating like same we do we make chapatis out of uh, the wheat uh, the wheat uh, sorry wheat flour so same they can do it with the cycas seed of the pinus gerandia they are also edible and they can be eaten by many one kafir bread prepared from the stem pith of encephaliders so this is a pith portion by which they some people can make the uh, bread young leaves of cycas cooked as vegetables so as we uh, generally use so many leaves for the vegetable preparation so the young leaves of cycas they can also cook as a vegetable leaves this was the, all the food value which we can got from the gymnosperm now the third thing we have to see here the medicinal value so how they can be medicinally used ephedrine alkaloid that extracted from the ephedra used in treating asthma cough cold and bronchitis so these were the disease uh, which can be treated by 
taking some alkaloid aphidine extracted from the aphidera. So aphidera plant which is responsible for secreting this aphidine, they are uh, used can their use can be happen as hydrosma and other diseases. Tincture of aphidera is a cardiac stimulant. So also aphidera plant they have uh, very much importance inside the cardiac activities. So they can also be used their tincture actually that can also be used in the cardiac stimulant. The juice extracted from the young leaf of Cycus rebuluta is used for uh, curing blood vomiting and flatulence. So if some person is facing any, you know, bad ball movement or something that causes uh, blood vomiting inside them, so the juice of the young leaf of Cycus can cure them. Now this was the medicinal use which can be seen by the gymnosperm. Now we are going to see some industrial uses. Gum cycus gum use, uh, that is name as a gum cycus gum, used as an adhesive antidote for snake bites and using malignant ulcers. So uh, by this uh, cycus gum, what we can meet, we can meet the antidote. Uh, also this gum that is used as adhesive region for just anything, uh, for like a normal gum, if we wanted to make something to stick, we can use it. And uh, also, this uh, wait a minute and also some antidote for the snake bites that uh, some like medicinal use you can say and using malignant ulcer so if uh, some person can facing ulcer they can also use it tannins tanning extracted from the bark of russia pinus and sequoia used in leather industry so tannin are basically uh, used in the polishing of leather as leather need polish by time to time so for their polishing there are some shiny uh, things or shiny you know gum like but it's not exactly gum but there's a shiny liquid that can be uh, extracted by the bark of these uh, gymnosperm plant and they can be used in the leather industry canada balsam it is a terpenoids obtained from ABS balsama and used as a mounting medium in biological preparation. Canada balsam actually, they can be used like the herbarium sheets when we do inside the lab. And at that time, what we wanted to place our plant has to be stick on a herbarium sheet. And for sticking that uh, plant onto the sheet, we can use the Canada balsam and any other mounting medium, like if we wanted something to be sticked, some biological living things, cells or tissue, we can use this terpenoids of the Canada balsam. Fourth property of the industrial use, you can see here the amber formation or you can see the fossil resin. They can be obtained from the pinus or succinifera they are the two main important genus which are you know uh, determined to producing amber or fossil resin wood of pinus is used for doors poles beam railway wagon flooring so the uh, actually pinus wood is a uh, pretty tough non porous or pinolozylic so uh, pretty tough wood and that's why we can use the wood of pinus to make the doors poles and beam everything whatever the use you are seeing here they needed a wood which has to be hard in nature so that's why we can use the pinus uh, we can use pinus wood and this fossil resin why we use resin resin is like the lubricant thing or you can say the resin they have uh, some something sometimes they can also be used as a preservative value so that's why amber resin is important Plywood prepared from photocarpus. So plywood are like the light wood or some porous wood can also be used as a plywood. So in the plywood preparation, we can use photocarpus plant. Paper like newsprint. Obviously, paper can be formed from these plant in a very large quantity because they are having very large, long foliage leaves inside them and that uh, will make a very ideal and that character of them make them very ideal for the paper making writing and printing papers so in writing and printing papers are being prepared from the wood pulp of the pinus 
Pisia abies and metum. Cycles leaf can be used for their vapor formation, but wood pulp, the very outer layer of the wood of pinus, Pisia abies and metum, they can be used in the making of the plywood. The leaves of cycade are used in preparing baskets, mat, hats, broom. And also the leaf of cycade, whole, uh, you can say whole family, they can be determined for the preparing of basket. Normal thing or homemade things can be made here. Mats, normal, you know, leaf mat you can be seen at your villages or the low towns. They are having this mats, hats and broom also. They, these kind of uh, domestic thing can be made by the cycades. The fiber obtained from the leaves of cycas and marcosamia are used for stuffing pillows and making mattresses. So, so these also are the fibers plant and fiber can be obtained from the leaves of cycan and marcosamia, two plants. And uh, what they are used for, like uh, mostly we use cotton in our country, we use cotton fiber for filling or stuffing the pillow and mattresses. And they, in the northern east country, they mostly use this uh, leaf fiber or macrosamia leaf fiber to make it for the their stuffing for their pillow. Now we are going to see the source of uh, oil. Source of oil. So oil is extracted from the seed uh, of the Cycus revoluta. That are the macrosamia, radial, pinus, embrya, and cephalotexas, juclina. They are used as an edible oil. Like we can use the sunflower oil, vegetable oils, or you can say brassica oil, means uh, normal mustard oil. So these things can be used as an edible oil. So the same, the oil that has been extracted from these gymnospermic family, they can be also good as an edible oil. Red cedar wood oil extracted from the hard wood of the Genisperus virginina is used for cleaning microscopic preparation and oil immersion lenses. Like we know that uh, we can use oil immersions inside the uh, microscopy. So for cleaning them, we uh, use the red cedar wood oil. So actually red cedar wood oil have a high intensity in the cleaning of microscopic lenses or you can see the immersion lenses or microscopic slides on which we can see the immersions or emulsions. So these things can be cleaned by the red cedar food oil. Oil obtained from the citrus deodora or the citrotimeria, japonica, copris, sami, uh, serum pervenian, they are used in preparation of perfume. So they can also be used inside the making of different kind of perfume so there are a lot of kind of uh, diversity even in their oils for their diverse uses now this jingoga plant that is they are having some their special you know uh, special characteristic in them only what are their characteristic what are their important characteristic actually here the jingoga this is the oldest uh, known genus of the living trees so as they are the you know oldest kind of uh, living trees and jingoga is truly and widely cultivated in some countries today particularly in parks along with the city street where it is planted frequently because it is resistance to air pollution and disease jingoga have a like uh, in our country as we treat the people tree so the same kind of respect of the jingoga has been in Japan and Chinese countries because they also have a very high resistance to the air pollution and the several diseases. The leaves and the nuts of jingoga are used for medicine all over the world of the treatment of asthma, cough, bronchitis, digestive problem, urinary incompetence. So these are the things even you can say not only the air pollution or the disease that can be cured by having the jinkoga plant around us but also their seeds and their nuts and their leaves they are also very useful in curing so many diseases so that's why they are the important kind of plant the conifers now another kind of gymnosperm they are 
most familiar gymnosperm. Actually, they include the pines, cypresses, firs, cedars, hemlock, yew latches, cypress, and others. So, most of the beautiful kind of the flowers come from the conifers, even your Christmas tree. They are also come from the conifers. So, the pine has tough needle like leaves. So, basically, the pinus uh, is an important kind of pine, are the important kind of plant which come under the conifers. They have a unique value. The leaves which have a thick cuticle and resist stomata. So, they are having thick cuticle and resist stomata because I told you why they are present like this to reduce the rate of transpiration. We present a evolutionary adaptation for retarding body loss and they have a evolutionary adaptation basically this in the form of having thick cuticles and stomata they are basically the adaptation plant have this quality of the adaptation they can adapt anything according to the environment for their survival so the things which they can adapt here just to minimize the water loss they are important because uh, many of these grow in the areas where topsoil is frozen part of the year, making it hard for the roots to obtain water. And since conifers are almost trees, they create forests that provide habitat for wildlife. So we can see their importance. They why they these kind of adaptations they needed because most of uh, them conifers basically they are the mountain plants. And most of the mountain plant uh, in which their first layer, their first, you know, just their layer in which they present, that is uh, in the form of ice. And the icy water or in the water in the form of ice cannot be utilized by trees. So for saving their water, they need these kind of adaptation. And also they are almost trees, conifers. They are not like shrubs or clumber. They are the perfect like kind of trees. So that's why they also create the wildlife, uh, they also create the forest for the wildlife habitat. They are also important economically because they provide wood and used in making buildings, furniture and paper. And we know the plant have a very uh, not common feature for the industrial uses, wood. And uh, that is have a several uh, uses of wood inside our industries or paper industry, furniture making. And this was the economical use if we see their ecological use in respect to environment. For ecological value, the leaves of the conifers gives them an advantage over broad leaf pet trees in cold environment. Since the leaves of most conifers are evergreen, they can carry a photosynthesis on sunny winter days when most broadleaf trees are leafless. So what happened? As uh, this conifers, they have the character of having evergreen plant. They are not deciduous like most of the plant over a time. They just, you know, shed their uh, leaf and they do not possess photosynthesis, not going to make enough amount of food. So at that time also, they having a very, you know, large canopy. They are having this large leaf structure inside them. They are making a lot of photosynthesis and producing food material. So they also have the advantage of not having the use of extra energy every year to produce a new crop of leaves in spring. So they also do not need to do, like whenever the plant uh, reproducing the new crop or new leaves, at that time they need a very immense amount of energy and you can see the large amount of energy. So for that process, they had not to follow that particular kind of process also. So this was all about the gymnosperm, that how they can look, uh, you know, how can they, we can see them from the outside and how uh, the most uh, common kind of internal structure and you just seen how they are economically, ecologically important to us. So that's why the gymnosperm plant have a unique kind of speciality to present around us and make the environment better. Even they pr provide mostly the forest area, they make the forest area inside the hilly areas, mountain areas and provide the shelter to the a lot of kind of wildlife and giving them food, nourishing them. So that's why they are even they are so beautiful also so we they have a special kind of ornamental values even inside we can put them inside inside our 
house or in any where the place which we wanted to be look better we can use a gymnosperm okay class still you guys have any problem you can go through these references they have much more knowledge on the all aspect of the gymnosperm and still you guys have any confusion you can ask me anytime that's all for today thank you